Hi, my name's Linda, and I'm going to tell you all about Joseph Pilates. Hi, my name's Linda Magid. I am the owner and instructor of Pilates for Real Bodies, an online Matt Pilates studio. And I'm going to tell you all about Joseph Pilates, as well as how he created the Pilates method and how it became so popular. The first thing you need to know is that not a lot is known about Joseph Pilates. He intentionally made sure that his backstory was kept hidden from people and that they only knew the things that he himself told them. It wasn't until this book written by John Howard Steele, this was written last year, 2020, I believe it came out, it wasn't until this was written that we really have any definitive information about Pilates and his background. If you have read anything about him being a Holocaust survivor, none of that is true. He actually was in the United States before World War II ever happened. But I digress. If you don't want to read the entire book, then I am giving you the too long, didn't read version. And then if you want more, of course, you can purchase the book. And I have a link. Uh, in my bio for that. So Joseph Pilates was born in 1884. He was born to a working class family. He'd always been interested in physical fitness and as an adult did his best to work in that area. So he was a boxer. He also worked for a circus, but unfortunately for him, his uh, work as a fitness professional never really got off the ground. He was married and had a child with his wife. They, uh, he also adopted his wife's child from her first marriage, but then in 1913, Mary died. Instead of caring for the children, however, Pilates took the children to his in-laws and left them there. And as far as we know, never went back to see them again. He was also arrested in this year for being on a German Navy vessel that was dropping mines on the Thames River. The ship was uh, camouflaged as a passenger ship. So we don't know if Pilates went into the military or if he was a stowaway on the ship thinking that it was a passenger ship and was trying to get out of Germany. We don't know uh, because Steele couldn't uncover that information, but he did find evidence of Pilates being in jail for five years as a prisoner of war during World War I. When World War I ended in 1919, he goes back to Germany and he gets married again and has another child. He again tries to work in the physical fitness world, but remember at that time, Germany was reeling from the war and the uh, international community was not forthcoming with help for the Germans. So it's hard to imagine that anyone was really doing well at that time. He leaves his wife and his child and moves to Hanover, which is a bigger city than where he was living. And this is where he met Hanya Holm, who is a very prominent ballet dancer in Germany at the time. And he starts working with ballet dancers and helping them heal and having them be strong. And this is kind of where we, I am assuming the Pilates method began. He decides in 1925 that he has had enough and wants to go to America. His brother was also in the United States. He had already left and he decides he's gonna go. So he buys a first class ticket um, and takes a boat across the Atlantic to the United States. It's kind of important that he booked a first class ticket because he didn't have very much money. And he probably booked it because people in first class got asked fewer questions by the immigration officers than people in the other classes. And so this way he didn't have to tell anyone that he had been a prisoner of war in World War I. So he goes to the United States, stays there for two months, goes back to Germany, gets his things together, somehow manages to get his estranged wife to give him all of his papers, and he takes 
a boat to the United States, and that's where he stays for the rest of his life. At some point, either in Hanover, which is more likely, or as he claims, on the boat over to the United States, he meets Clara Zuner, and Clara becomes his life companion. They never get officially married, but they essentially were, you know, it's a common law marriage. He is teaching his fitness work and she is taking care of him. During his time in the United States, he gets again connected with the ballet community and Hanya Holm also comes to the United States, which makes a really big difference for him. And in the 40s and 50s, this is when Pilates is known as the man who fixes broken dancers. And this is where his fame or uh, his infamy comes from. And this is why a lot of people think that Pilates is connected to ballet. Um, it, it is only because those are the people who would listen to him and take his advice for having a healthy body. He also opens up his own Pilates studio with his reformers and he teaches a few other people how to do his program and they open up studios around town with their reformers. And then over time, he gets older and he kind of falls out of favor with the ballet community. And, but he, uh, he still has his own studio where people come, diehard people come to exercise. And then eventually in 1967, he died at 84 years old. So that is the history of Joseph Pilates. How did Pilates become an exercise format? Well, Joseph Pilates told some pretty good stories about that. He claimed that he created the reformer while he was a prisoner of war, helping other prisoners stay healthy against a cholera epidemic. So Steele discounts this for several reasons. One, there were no bed springs at the time, and he claimed that he used bed springs to create the spring-like work that if you are on a reformer, you'll recognize that springs are used to create tension. He claims that he used the springs to create tension to get people strong. Unfortunately, we know this isn't true because there were no bed springs used at that time in the 19 teens on beds and certainly not on prisoner of war beds. There were mattresses with a wood on a wood stand and that was it. The other piece of evidence is that there's no, there was no cholera outbreak at that prison that Steele could find. It wasn't noted anywhere. The other thing that Pilates said was that he read a lot of anatomy books when he was a child. Steele notes that this is probably unlikely because those books were very expensive and would not have been accessible to him even in a library and certainly not ones that he could have purchased for himself because they were out of reach for a working class family who had nothing to do with the medical community. And Steele notes that when he worked with people, he never used anatomical language. So it's unlikely that that is true. What's more likely, while there isn't written evidence for this, is that while Pilates was in prison and he had a very small space to work in, he taught himself how to exercise. And if you've ever done mat Pilates, you realize it's done in a very small space. Basically, your mat. And so he probably taught himself those exercises while he was also thinking of exercise pieces like the reformer or the wounded chair that he could create when he got out of prison. There's no doubt that he was a brilliant mind with exercise. It just probably didn't happen the way that he said. And then while working with dancers and having the freedom to create and tinker, he created the reformer and then built his studio. So that's probably more likely the story of how it happened. Why did Pilates want his history to be a secret? Well, he probably didn't want people to know that he left three children behind in Germany without any kind of financial support. And he probably didn't want people to know that he'd been a prisoner of war in World War I, even if he had innocently been on that boat he still was held as a prisoner. And given that Germany had started a war both in the early 1900s and then again in the 1940s, 
he was not going to be sharing that information openly. So now, how did Pilates become a worldwide phenomenon? Especially since when Pilates died, he had a small, decrepit studio in New York that most people didn't even know existed. Well, when he died, Clara was not a business manager and she had no interest or really even ability to run the studio. So a group of people who loved Pilates and didn't want to stop decided to try to find someone to run the studio. None of the other Pilates instructors were interested. So these group of people, they decided to do it themselves. Now, none of them were doing it full time. And after two years, they decided they really hated it and they were not interested in running the studio anymore. So they worked hard again at finding someone who would be able to and be willing to pick up the Pilates mantle. And they found Romana Krizanowska. And she, in 1972, became the Pilates instructor in New York. Again, there were still people doing it, but they were doing it in a much smaller level. And the people who were uh, kind of picked up Pilates legacy built a beautiful new studio in a really prominent part of New York and told Romana, it's all yours, you need to run this. And she did. And she did it for many years. But it wasn't until Ron Fletcher decided that he wanted to teach Pilates out in California. Now this made a big difference for a few reasons. First, Ron Fletcher worked with celebrities. And whenever a celebrity does something, everybody else wants to do it. So that's one reason it became popular. Another reason is that Ron was very charismatic and people were drawn to him. So he had more and more people coming to him taking his classes. And people could see that they could themselves learn how to teach Pilates and then have a successful Pilates studio themselves because they weren't really happening anywhere else outside of New York. And because of that, Ron started to teach other people to teach Pilates and it grew and grew. And with that growth also came the need for the Pilates equipment like the Reformer. And it just became bigger and bigger. At some point, a guy who had no connection with Pilates saw this opportunity to license the name, meaning that he and Romana would own the word Pilates and own the rights to all of the equipment that, that is associated with Pilates. Thankfully, uh, that was taken to court, that idea and that plan was taken to court, and he and Romana lost. And that is why so many people today can teach Pilates and why it is so different. You could go to a Pilates class every day of the week and have seven completely different experiences in Pilates, which I think really makes it a richer experience. So I hope you got a lot of information out of this video and that it was helpful for you to learn about Joseph Pilates and his history. Please subscribe to my channel and watch another video. Have an amazing day.